And he gets better and better. How is that possible? Because you get to know him more and more. That's how he gets better and better. He's the same as he always was. You just happen to get to know him a little better. Glory be to God. First, you might have known him as, you know, Savior. And then you figured out you better make him Lord. Right? And then he became the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then the healer of your physical body. And then the bearer of all your poverty. The manifestation of Jehovah Jireh. The Lord your provider. He is your provider. Well, I'm my provider, sister. If I can work just a few more hours. Why? You have a provider. You should work less hours. And <laughs> you are. Glory be to God. But that doesn't mean your workload decreases. It means your workload changes into what? You become a word worker. Hallelujah. Rather than just, you know, physical laborers, you work with your body. Then knowledge workers do what? They work with knowledge, with their minds. What's a word worker work with? <laughs> a word worker works with the fundamental things of which things are made of. A word worker works with those things that everything is made of. There is no knowledge without the word, is there? So a word worker trumps even the, the knowledge workers. Right? Some big old smart scientific guy with a head can barely fit in the room. You just speak the word to him and you're smarter than he is. God made the foolish things, confound the things of the wise people. Didn't he? So if we just stick with him, we're really wise. We're really smart. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Well, I'm excited about tonight. We've come a long ways. We're going to start a new series here. A new series? You just keep coming up with these new series. I don't come up with anything, believe me. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about half the time, but that's okay. I have enough faith to open my mouth and believe God's going to fill it with something beyond my own knowledge. And that happens every time I come up here. Glory be to God. I'm not, I'm not smart enough to come up with this stuff. God is, absolutely. Amen. My wife goes, Amen. He's not smart enough. Oh, all right. I don't deny it. Glory be to God forever. You know, you hook up with the Spirit of all wisdom. He's the Spirit of wisdom and knowledge. What else do you need? You don't need to be smart. Your friend is. If your best friend was the smartest and the best and the greatest at everything, well, what do you care? You're just going to tag along with him anyway. Hallelujah. You get into all the parties. You get all the reservations at the best restaurants. You get into the shows. Why? Because you're so good looking? No, because he's so good looking. And I'm with him. I remember this was back when I was a hippie. Were you ever hippie, Patrick? Rich? <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about that. Back when I was a hippie, I used to play in bands and stuff. And I was underage, but I had really long hair. And nobody could tell. And I played in the band. And, you know, and you had to be a certain age to get into bars and stuff to play. But I'd just walk up to the guy who was standing there and say, I'm with the band. And they'd let me in. No questions, no IDs, no nothing. I'd walk in with equipment in my hand. I was with the band. Well, you walk in with the Holy Ghost on you. You're with the band. Yeah. All right? You're, you, you've got it all. He is the promise, and He gets you in everywhere. Hallelujah. Even where you don't belong sometimes. <laughs> Over your head, I mean. He'll take you to places. Well, Peter, did he have any business walking on the water? Not really. His faith wasn't there, was it? He was out beyond where he should be. And yet the Holy Ghost took him there. It's the same thing with God overflowing. He had, you know, you have no business with that small of a boat asking God to fill it. 
You're out beyond where you should be at that point. Get a bigger boat. If you're going to ask God to fill something, get a bigger boat. Hallelujah. I don't know where that came from, but that was good. Glory be to God. Well, my message tonight is the power of speaking in tongues. And we're going we're gonna to go on this for a while because there's no way you can possibly get through all of this at once. Well, I know all there is to know about speaking in tongues. Really? So you must be really smart. No. He knows all there is. I'm telling you, I'm going to share some things with you tonight that I never even thought of. And and it's going to come out and you're going to go, wow, I never even thought of that. Why? Because the Holy Ghost. He's the one who gives you the tongues to speak. Oh, glory be to God. We're going to get into this. This is going to be good. And my purpose here is to increase your faith in speaking in tongues. Is there any benefit to that? Having greater faith in it? Now think about this. You're speaking words that come up out of your spirit by the Holy Ghost. And you can have greater faith in that. What happens when you believe what you say? They come to pass. The things you believe that you say come to pass, come to pass. The the things you believe in your spirit. So if we have greater faith in those words, it's one thing just to pray in tongues. Blah, 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 blah. It's another thing to believe in the things you're doing. And I guarantee you, as you start seeing these things and we get a grasp on it, you're going to want to pray in tongues more. I'm telling you. You know, I want every one of you praying in tongues an hour a day at a minimum. But when you start seeing these things, you're going to realize that praying in tongues is so much more. And you're going to start to understand what Paul was saying is, I speak in tongues more than you all. Right? And then he says, pray without ceasing. And then the Bible says, follow me as I follow Christ. That was Paul saying that. So we're supposed to be imitators, followers. And I guarantee you, as your faith increases and your understanding, right? Your understanding increases, your faith increases to that level. You really can't have faith beyond your level of understanding. That's why some people have never received the Holy Ghost. They never understood that it was for today. Well, we know that, so we've received. Our level of understanding and our experience and faith went up to that level. Well, what if we take it to a new level? Your faith is going to increase to that level and you will have more productivity, more things happening. Hallelujah. There's power in speaking in tongues. And that's where the key is. And I'm hoping I can get that across to you today. The power is in speaking in tongues. He's, Jesus said you would receive power when the Holy Ghost comes on you. What did you do when the Holy Ghost came on, came on you? You spoke in tongues. You spoke. Right? Is there anything to do with words in the Bible? Why would the Holy Ghost, who's God manifesting in the earth today, why would He come on you and cause you to speak? Cause you to speak. Why is that the first thing? Because that's who God is. He's manifesting Himself in words. He's manifesting Himself in words. How does God manifest Himself? In and through and by words. All the time. What is this in your hand? It's the Word of God. Now quickly turn over with me and we'll begin this. John chapter 1. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna scream right through this stuff because you guys can handle it. Glory be to God forever. John chapter 1 and verse 1. We're going to pray, Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your holy written word. It's our, it's our guide in this earth right now. Thank you for sending it. Thank you for sanctifying it with the blood of Jesus and even with the blood of your saints, bringing it to us in Jesus' name. We receive this word tonight. We ask your presence, Holy Ghost. We thank you for being here. Quicken us according to your knowledge, according to your wisdom, according to your glory. And we worship you in it and by it. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. 
And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Everybody say that. The Word was God. One more time. The Word was God. Does God change? Is He different today? He's still the Word. What are words? They're spoken substances, aren't they? And we know the greater we go in faith, that faith is the substance of things. Things spoken. He's substance. Is, is there substance to God? There's no substance to Him. He's just words. He's like a wisp. He's like a vapor. There's substance to Him. So when God says He's the Word, is there substance to Him? Okay. Is there a manifestation of Him? What's the manifestation of Him? The Word. And whatever He said is the manifestation of Him. And you can't know Him apart from His Word. Why? Because He is the Word. You guys are a bunch of word freaks. Absolutely. Thank you very much. It's all about the Word. He was the Word. And He is the Word today. And guess what? He always will be the Word. And guess what you are? You're born of the Word. You're a Word child of a Word God. Word up. All right, you got that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Who's God? He is the Word. He manifests Himself through words. And God said, and God said, and God said this, and God said that. And then the Word was made flesh. What was made flesh? The Word was made flesh. Is it any wonder that when the Holy Ghost came on you, you spoke what? No, I just quivered. Well, then you didn't receive the Holy Ghost. He came on you and tried to give you an unction, but you never spoke them. You speak as He gives you utterance. And what are you speaking? Words. His words, supernatural words from a different world, sister. These are words coming from heaven, coming from the Holy Ghost. And what are they going to do? Nothing. They don't have any substance to them. I already said that. No. They have substance. He's not going to cause you to say something that means nothing that stupid. What a waste of time. Well, I think I'll go down there and waste their time on the day of Pentecost. I'm the holy time waster. No, are you kidding me? He's the Holy Ghost. And His job is to manifest something in the earth, isn't it? What's He going to manifest in the earth? Words. Oh, goodness gracious. You guys are good. Hallelujah. What kind of words? His words. Holy words. Absolutely. Glory to God. How does God manifest words in the earth? Somebody has to speak them. Before it was prophets. He'd send His prophets and they would speak words. And then He said in the last day it was Jesus. He sent His Son to speak words. And now look who He's sending. Well, look in the mirror. Who's He sending to speak His words? Prophets had the Holy Ghost come on them and they'd prophesy. You have the Holy Ghost come on you. You speak in tongues and prophesy. And I'm telling you, the speaking in tongues is even greater than the prophecy because you can only prophesy according to your faith. You can speak in tongues way out beyond your realm of understanding. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4. My speech and my preaching was not with what? Enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power. What was in demonstration of the Spirit and power? His speaking and his preaching was in demonstration, demonstration of the Spirit and Power, okay? Demonstration, what's it mean? To demonstrate. You look it up, it means to show, it means to make visible something. So in Paul's speaking and preaching, his words, 
There was a making visible of something. The kingdom of God was made visible. The gospel was made visible. The good news was made visible through words. And he said in those words were power. There was a demonstration of making visible and power. Well, that's Paul. He's the apostle. He was very powerful. How was Paul powerful? So I say that three times. How was Paul powerful? In words, by the power of the Holy Spirit. He spoke words. And it demonstrated, made visible the gospel, the kingdom of God, and power. What power? God's power, not Paul's power. God's supernatural power from the other world. Ooh, the other world. Yeah, powers of the world to come, he talked about. What world to come? The, the world you belong in, sister. It's where you live. It's what society you belong in. It's your citizenship. That's where your power comes from. If you were to go over in another country right now, you would still be a citizen of the United States of America and you would, you would retain certain powers granted to you still from this country in that other country. Hallelujah. Okay. His words, right? We're in demonstration of the Spirit and power. Go with me to John 14. John 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another Comforter, that He may abide with you forever. It's John chapter 14, verse 16. He's going to give... This is Jesus saying, I'm going to go to the Father. I'm going to give you another comforter. Another meaning, just like Him, another. If you're going to have another apple, Patrick, you better have had the first one. Right? If you didn't have the first apple, you can't have another one. You don't go to somebody's house and say, may I have another cookie? Well, you haven't had any yet. You can have another one after you eat the first one, right? So Jesus said he's going to send another of similar nature, like him. He was with them night and day. He did miracles. He did all this stuff. What did he do? He taught them. He trained them. He comforted them. He counseled them. He paid for them. What did he do? He did everything for them. They were what? His best friends, and they just tagged along. Wherever he went, he went into the temple. He didn't even have any money. He paid for them to get in the temple. Right? They were just hanging out with him. They were groupies. They were with the band. Well, Jesus said he's going to send another. Another. Another what? Another miracle worker. Another teacher. Another counselor. Another peace giver. Another one who does miracles and is with you all the time, Julia. All the time, just like Jesus. And he said he had to go or he couldn't send him to you. He was just one person, could only be in one place at one time. But the Holy Ghost, he can be with every one of us. On the day of Pentecost, he came and sat on each one of them, each one specifically. You, Holy Ghost, you, Holy Ghost, everybody, Holy Ghost. You get your own personal comforter. Now, why don't we say that? Come receive Jesus as your personal Savior. Come receive the Holy Ghost as your personal Comforter, Amen. your personal Amen. God in the earth today. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, we just want to receive tongues. What? No, see, and this is where people are missing it. Some Pentecostals think that. They just received the gift of tongues. Blah, 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 blah. They weren't receiving what Jesus said. A person. And he said it over and over and over again. A person, Patrick, he's with you. God Almighty with you, in you, on you. And giving you the ability to speak his words. Yeah. Not just your words, his words. When you speak under the unction of the Holy Spirit, you are not speaking your words. You're speaking his words. You are just opening the floodgate of heaven and letting it just Blood back out there. Yes. And you can do this anytime you want. You can do it as you will. I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with my understanding also. 
They spoke as he gave them utterance. And as we get into that, we'll see how he's always giving you utterance. Why? Because he's always there. He is always comforting. He's, he will be with you forever. He is always ready to bring more into your life from him. You've got to be willing to say more. It's up to you, once again. It's always up to you. You say more. You let more of him come out into your life. You let more of him manifest in your life. And when he comes, he convicts the world of sin, righteousness, judgment. You're the first one to get it. <laughs> he, ha, ah, glory be to God. But as he comes out, he gets everybody else too, doesn't he? Glory be to God forever. All right, look down to verse 21. He that has my commandments and keeps them is he that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, huh. and will manifest myself unto him, and will manifest. He is going to manifest himself to you. Guess who he manifested himself through? The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Christ. He's the Spirit of the Father, and he manifests through words. Thank you. He says, verse 22, Judas saith unto him, not a scary, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? He said he's going to manifest himself. So how is he going to manifest himself to you and not to the great wide world? How is he going to do it? Through words and through the Holy Ghost. Okay, flip with me right over here. How is he going to manifest himself? Now look over in Acts chapter 2. We spoke on that more previously about uh, how he bears witness with your spirit. <clears throat> but let's get more concrete right here. How is the Lord Jesus going to manifest himself to you and not to the world? All right? Glory be to God forever. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Who is they? Do you think it's the people he was telling he was going to manifest himself to and not to the world? Okay. And suddenly there came a sound from Biddeford. No. Where this this sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Everybody say, each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance they began to speak in tongues what is the beginning of something does that mean the end it's a one-time thing no it's just the beginning my friends you begin it's the beginning and as you begin he does what he begins to manifest himself wasn't the sound from heaven the manifestation no wouldn't Isaiah say that? He heard the sound in the big wind and God wasn't in the wind, was he? Scripture interprets Scripture. What was the evidence? And no, no good Pentecostal person would fall here. What was the evidence? Him manifesting. What was the evidence? Them speaking in tongues. Supernatural languages coming out of your mouth. They began this right here. That was the beginning. Didn't end. We're still doing it today. But it's the same way with you. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you begin to manifest the Holy Spirit in your life. And manifest means make visible. And from that day, and Rich and other people can give testify to testimony to this, that from the day they began speaking in tongues, they started having manifestations of God in their life like never before. They became witnesses to the power of God, which is what Jesus said you would be. When did it start? When you began 
to speak. Well, do you want it to end? Well, if you want it to end, stop speaking in tongues. Please, just stop. And then the manifestation of the kingdom of God will cease. Why? Because you're not letting that river flow out of you. What happens when a well begins to run over and it keeps running over? Jesus said out of your belly would flow a river, but you had to dig down deep in that well and the well comes up. If you keep pouring out bucket after bucket after bucket after bucket outside the well, what happens around the well? It forms a stream. And you keep pouring that out and it keeps turning into what? It'll turn into a river eventually. Jesus said rivers. Well, that's a lot of tongues, my friend. You want rivers, rivers flowing out? You're going to have to have a river of tongues coming out of your mouth. You should barely be able to say hello on the phone when somebody calls you up. Bring, bring, flick up, rest in this Hello? Why? Because your mouth is so yielded to the Holy Spirit. You've got it in that flow, in that train. And what's coming out your mouth? Manifestation of the kingdom. How does God manifest the kingdom in the earth? Through words. Through supernatural words that you're speaking. You have the most authority over your life. So you want the kingdom of God manifest in your life? You're going to speak in tongues to the degree you want it manifest. Hallelujah. You guys believe in speaking in tongues? <laughs> oh, goodness. Are you kidding me? It is the power of God. Speaking in tongues is a manifestation of the power of God. It is the way. He could have come on them and made them do anything he wanted to. He could have picked them all up and all made them walk on water and then dropped them a little bit and then made them walk a little bit more. He could have done anything he wanted. But what did he do? Because he is the Word, he chose to manifest himself through words. And when you learn more about words, you learn that faith-filled words will dominate anything and everything. The laws of death, the laws of hell, they dominate everything. Jesus worked with words. God worked with words. He created everything with words. Now he's bringing the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, into manifestation in the earth through words, supernatural words uttered out of the mouths of his people in faith. And you're getting, you have more faith now than you had when you came here in your tongues that you speak. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. This is the manifestation of God. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, the Spirit is always giving you utterance. We can prove that right now because you can just start praying in tongues. Right now. You ever wonder that? Why is this the one thing that I can always do anytime? You can just start speaking in tongues right now. It's because He always is giving you utterance. He's one way. He's going in one direction. That's get the kingdom of God manifest in the earth. He doesn't speak by Himself. He has a person in the earth who must speak His words. But He's always there, always giving the unction. He's waiting for you. This is why you can do it. I guarantee you, you might get a tired jaw, but you could physically pray in tongues for 12 hours straight and he wouldn't stop giving you an unction. Well, he doesn't slumber or sleep. What's his, what's he doing? He's manifesting God in the earth. He is God. He wants to manifest. And any yielded mouth that he can get a hold of, he will use. Let him use you. You got a mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. You ready for this next one? Flip over chapter. No, I guess it's the same chapter. Chapter 2, verse 38. It says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What was the gift he was talking about? 
The gift of the Holy Spirit. He's a person. He didn't say the gift of tongues, did he? And you will receive the gift of tongues. Well, you seem to be talking about the gift of tongues. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit manifesting. He is the Word. And He manifests through words. So when you receive Him, you will of necessity speak words. His words. If you repent and are baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, you will receive the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost, verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So this does not exclude you. The promise is for you, for them, and for as many generations as the Lord God shall call. It's for today. And what's the promise? The Holy Spirit. And when He comes on you, He's going to manifest the same way He did on the day of Pentecost. You will speak words. His words, supernatural words. And it's the beginning for you. Well, that's the end. And you, you'll hear old time Pentecostal people speak like it. I sought the Holy Ghost for 45 years and then one day I received the Holy Spirit and I spoke in tongues. <sighs> Glory to God. It's over for me. I got what I needed. I'm going to go home. <laughs> that's just the beginning. What is it? The beginning of words. The beginning of the kingdom of God in manifestation. Hallelujah. You're going to be doing things you never thought you were going to do. Because the Holy Ghost is coming on you and you're going to speak His words and pretty soon you're a completely different person. Doing His thing. Going with Him. You're the groupie. You just go with Him. Well, we're going to Los Angeles this week for a show. What kind of show? A Holy Ghost show. I'm just going along. Glory be to God. I'm a Holy Ghost groupie. Acts chapter 1 and verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. This is Jesus. Being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things of God, uh, the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So here's Jesus raised from the dead with the disciples and probably other people speaking to them concerning the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. He's telling them about the kingdom of God. What kingdom? The kingdom that shall come. No, the kingdom of God that is here and now that is in you. What's our job is to get that kingdom that's in you, out of you, and in manifestation around you. And then shall the end come. When the kingdom is in manifestation, as a demonstration and a witness and a sign. He's telling them this, I'm sure. Forty days... What did he just say? Three things in 40 days? I'm sure he said stuff way over their head. In fact, he says that earlier. He says, I got things I can share with you, but you can't handle it. So, uh, do we all understand? He's talking about the kingdom of God. He's trying to get across to them. This is what the kingdom of God is. This is what's supposed to happen. Verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them. And, listen, and, he's telling about the kingdom of God, and then he says, and commanded them. Patrick, this is all about the kingdom of God. Now, I command you. I command you. He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Remember, the promise is for everybody. He said, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, this, the kingdom of God, that, the kingdom of God, this. But I command you don't leave until you receive the promise. Why? All of the kingdom of God revolves around this promise. He didn't command them concerning anything else. He said, the kingdom of God revolves around this, which is what? The Holy Spirit coming on you. And we'll see that. Hang on. The promise of the Father, which... He saith, you have heard of me. But John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, what will be this time? Uh, restore again the kingdom to Israel. See, they still didn't get it, did they? 
They're still in the natural. What time are you going to come back and kick the Romans out? I know all that, you said all that stuff. I frankly, I didn't. I didn't understand it. What time are we going to get rid of the Romans? <laughs> like broken records here. And he said unto them, "It is not of you to know the things, of the times or the seasons which the Father has put in His own power." Here he goes again. You, but you shall receive power. He goes right back this, right back to point number one. He said, the kingdom of God, you're going to receive the promise. You will receive power when the promise comes on you. The promise is what? Power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost. After what? The power after. Power after. What, what did they do after the Holy Ghost came on them? They spoke words. They spoke in tongues. When did the power, with power came on them, but they had power after they spoke. You see in that? Where's the power? We all know this. We're word people. Where's the power? In faith-filled words. The power is in words. God created the world with words. That was His power. The power of speaking in tongues, people. It is the power to frame the kingdom of God in your world in this earth. This is why the devil has beat on it so hard. Well, just don't mention it. Don't just talk about speaking in tongues or I will leave the church. And I won't put my $4 in. <laughs> Please, here's $4. Go to some other church. <laughs> I will pay you to go somewhere else. <laughs> no way. He commanded them to stay, commanded them to receive the Holy Ghost. And he said the power would come on you after he comes on you. You will receive power after. What did they do after the Holy Ghost came on them? They spoke with tongues. Don't tell me there's no power in speaking in tongues. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the world. Of the earth. How are they going to be witnesses? After they speak. Why? The speaking in tongues is manifestation of the kingdom of God. Speaking supernatural things from the, His world into your world. Speaking the kingdom. The promise and the power to be witnesses. The power to live. He didn't say you would go a-witnessing. Did he? Well, and then you will go a-witnessing and handing out tracts. I believe in witnessing and handing out tracts. But I believe more in what this verse says. You will be a witness. Your life will be a witness. Why? Because you've manifested the power of God through supernatural utterance in every area of your life. If there's a part of your life that isn't manifesting the supernatural nature and power of the kingdom of God, then you need to speak in tongues over that until it does. Well, brother, I don't know what to do about my finances. I tell you what to do about it. Pray in tongues. Speak in tongues over it. How is the Holy Ghost going to manifest Himself? Through words. He's going to manifest Himself in your family. He's going to manifest Himself in your physical body. He's going to manifest Himself in your mind. He's the teacher. He's the comforter. He's the counselor, the helper, the strengthener. All of it comes through that vehicle of words being spoken. Hallelujah. You guys getting anything out of this? I hope I'm not going too long here. Hallelujah. But what my, my, my object here is to build our faith up. So that when we speak in tongues, we know what's going on and our faith is at that level. Then our pr prayer time is productive at that point. Hallelujah. John chapter 15, verse 26. Fredo Maragangles de Nabia. Hallelujah. But when the comforters come, let me ask you a question. Who is the comforter? The He's the Holy Ghost. What did he do when he came? He, he came on you and you spoke. 
Power came when you spoke. Power was there until you spoke. When you spoke, you received the power, right? Power came on you after. All right. When the Comforter is come, whom the Father will send unto you, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth. What is he? The Spirit of truth. He's the Comforter. He's the Spirit of truth. What kind of words are you going to speak out your mouth? Truth. Truth. When you're speaking in tongues, what's the first thing you're speaking? Truth. Truth. If you start speaking in tongues, I'm going to go, truth, brother. Truth. You're speaking truth. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God right there. You have the word of God that when you speak in tongues, you are speaking truth. Which proceeds from the father. He shall testify of me. What shall testify? The words you speak. Him manifesting himself through your words in your surroundings will testify of Jesus. You being healed is a testimony of Jesus. It's a manifestation of the Holy Ghost's words, and it's a testimony of Jesus. What of Jesus? That he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Verse 27 says, and you also shall bear witness. Once again, he didn't say you're going to go witnessing. He said your life is going to be a witness of this power of the Holy Ghost. When? After you speak in tongues and it's the beginning, how much of a witness do you want to be? You want to be a witness to the world? Well, you're going to have to speak a lot. <laughs> Man, brother, you're committing me to speaking in tongues an awful lot. I'm telling you, you begin speaking in tongues. Glory Copeland said this years ago. I remember her when she first said it. She said God spoke to her to speak in tongues an hour a day. She said, an hour a day? Because, you know, at that time, she'd be speaking in tongues five minutes here, five minutes there, and five minutes seemed like a long time. <laughs> but when she committed to doing it, you know, and the first couple of times it was like, oh, 15 minutes seemed like two and a half hours. But I guarantee you, as you get into that, and she said, after doing that for a year, that's 365 hours of praying in tongues, right? Not all at once, one a day. She said her life just was completely changed. She said, I don't know how I lived the other way before. What was happening? He was manifesting himself now in her kingdom, all around her. To me, an hour a day is like nothing anymore. Olivia was trying to catch up with me. Was it yesterday? She goes, Dad, I spoke from tongues for two and a half hours. I'm trying to catch up with you. I'm like, yeah, you better run fast, girl. Fregadashkamleha. Why? I want the kingdom of God manifest in my life. I'm tired of my kingdom. What do you say? His kingdom come, not yours. <laughs> oh, my kingdom is so great. Oh, please. Compared to his kingdom, let's get his kingdom in manifestation. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Shoo, what did we just read? 1526 words. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Good. Yeah, at least we're on the same page. I think we are, too, because I want to read 16.12. 16.12 says, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. You can't handle it. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> they couldn't handle the truth. Do you think there's anything we can't handle right now? Yeah. What if we, what if we want to handle it? I want to be able to handle it. You ha I have yet many things to say unto you, but you can't bear them now. Verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come. Now listen to me. When did he come? On the day of Pentecost. When he came, what was the manifestation of the power? Speaking in tongues. When he comes, he will teach you all things. Why didn't he say he, he will teach you to speak in tongues? Because this is a manifestation of the tongues that you speak. Teaching you all things. You will learn all things speaking in tongues. You wonder where I got this message tonight? Speaking in tongues. 
I didn't know what I was going to preach on, but you know what I did? I said, I'm going to go speak in tongues for an hour. By the time I'm done, I got this whole message. I just write it down. I get him from speaking in tongues. He teaches me speaking in tongues. He will teach. Does it not say this? What was the manifestation of the Holy Ghost when he came on them the day of Pentecost? They spoke in tongues. He said he's going to teach you all things. He will guide you. He's the spirit of truth. What are the words you're speaking? Truth. Is come. He will guide you into all truth. He's going to guide you while you're speaking in tongues. He shall not speak of himself. Oh, that's right. Does he? What if they didn't open their mouth on the day of Pentecost? Would he have spoke? You would have heard a lot of mumbling. Mm -hmm. They had to speak. They spoke as he gave them utterance. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. What is one of the manifestations as you're speaking these words? Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, showing you things to come, manifesting in words. As you speak, you learn. As you speak, remember it's the beginning He will show you things to come. Verse 14, he shall glorify me, shall he, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Look up the word show. I did in Sharon's Amplified Bible. It means to transmit. He will take everything that Jesus is and transmit it unto you. When? When you're speaking in tongues, he's transmitting, he's teaching, he's guiding, he's showing you things to come. He's transmitting all those things that belong to Jesus to you, in you and around you, in the kingdom of God, in this earth today. Look at the verse, uh, verse 15, all things that the father has are mine. Therefore, said I, he shall take of mine and show it or transmit it to you. When, when you continue to speak in tongues, it was the beginning. Can you handle it a little bit more? I don't want to take up your time here. Hallelujah. But I want you to have strong faith in the power of speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. John fourteen twenty six. It's right there. All of these are right there. But the Comforter, who is at the Holy Ghost... Well, he even says it. <laughs> but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. I'm glad he clarified that. Whom the Father will send in my name. Hold on to that, people. Who's he sending the Holy Ghost in? What name? Jesus' name. The Holy Ghost is manifest in the name of Jesus. What do we know about the name of Jesus? It's the name above every name. What is the name in manifestation? It puts down all things under its feet. The Holy Spirit in manifestation in that name subdues everything. Puts all things under his feet. This is the Holy Ghost in the name. You've got the name. Who else is in the earth? Where's the name? It's in the earth. He's manifesting in that name. Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I said unto you. When does he do this? When the Holy Ghost comes, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, what did he do? Did all of a sudden he brought all things to their remembrance? That was the sign, wasn't it? All of a sudden the, the apostles, the disciples in the upper room, the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost and they remembered everything. And they ran out into the street and it was a sign. I remember you. <laughs> no. When they spoke in tongues, he brings to remembrance. It is through this. It's through words he's bringing to your remembrance. I feel like I'm exploding up here. You guys are just watching me ooze out all over the place. Do I have cracks all over my body? as I'm? This is how he manifests himself. 
through words, the Holy Ghost manifesting, bringing to your remembrance, teaching you all things as you speak. These words you've begun, you must continue. Verse 27, peace. What else comes as you're speaking in tongues? He teaches you. He trains you. He brings things to remembrance. He shows you things to come. He comforts you. He counsels you. He intercedes for you. He's your advocate. He's your standby. He's your helper. And he gives you peace. As you're praying in these tongues, as you're speaking in tongues, do we have scriptures for every single one of these? Yes, we do. Every single one talking about the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. We have the rest of God. We have the peace of God that passes understanding. We have the comforter, the counselor, the intercessor, the intercessor, the advocate, the standby, all of these things he does when you're speaking in tongues. No wonder the devil doesn't like speaking in tongues. Because he doesn't understand it. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is the power of the world to come manifest in your mouth. All right. Glory be to God. Quickly here. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2. I'm almost done. You guys did really well. Jesus is Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have. Now this is after the day of Pentecost, right? Yes. This is after the Corinthians received the Holy Ghost. This is after they were born again, baptized in water, and received the Holy Ghost. Okay? It says, now we have, past tense, received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. Understand? They received the Spirit. How did they know they received the Spirit? That was of God. They had to speak. You can't know you received. And next, there's actually scriptures. I'm not going to take you there. But it says they knew they received because they spoke in tongues. That's the power. That's the manifestation of the power. Power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes on you. He comes on you. Then after you have the power and you speak. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Why? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So they know it. Personally, live it. Be a witness of all the things that are freely given to you of God, Julia, all of them. That's your witness. Hallelujah. They've received the Spirit of God that they might know the things. Well, you're just concerned about things. You just want things all the time. Yeah, the things of God. Everything God's got, I want to know them. You mean know about them? No, personally, physically know them in my life. Healing power, delivering power, all of these things. Look at the very next verse. Verse 13 says, Which things? Everybody say things. things. What things? The things that are freely given to us of God. What things also we speak? All of these things that are freely given to us of God, when the Holy Ghost came on them, they speak. We don't even know all the things. How can we speak something we don't even know all the things He's given to us? We speak in tongues. We speak in supernatural language by the ability of the Holy Ghost giving us unction. To the degree that you want the things is the degree you're going to have to speak. God won't surpass the authority of your own mouth. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And you can choose to let the Holy Ghost, you can choose those words to say them as they come up and get more accurate in your enunciation of all of those things and you will have more accurate manifestation of the kingdom of God in your life all over. Hallelujah. And you will be a witness. These things also we speak, not 
in the what? Words which man's wisdom teaches, but what? Words that the Holy Ghost teaches. Who's teaching you to say these things? Oh, I'm just making them up. skibbity scabbity dabida No, the Holy Ghost gives you the unction and you speak them. Which things we speak, not in words that the man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing the spiritual things with the spiritual words. That's a different translation, but this says comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You are comparing the spiritual thing that the Holy Spirit is coming up out of you with, with a spiritual word that fits it. Just like you'd be describing to me on the phone. Well, what kind of dog's out in your yard? Well, it's a pink dog with three legs. <laughs> and he's really big. And he's running backwards. <laughs> and every every new detail I describe on that is forming a new image in your head about that pink three-legged dog running backwards. And he's fuzzy. <laughs> and he's got an eye patch on him. Yeah, absolutely. Do you see what I'm saying? You're comparing a spiritual something on the inside of you with the accurate spiritual word that he's giving you. And you can develop in your prayer language to the degree where you are very descriptive. And the more descriptive and accurate you get to flow with him, the more accurate the manifestation of the kingdom of God will be in your life. Hallelujah. Did you get anything out of that tonight? Glory be to God. That word, if you look it up, comparing, combining, and putting together. You're putting together. You're putting together the right word with the right unction. Sometimes you might have to say it two or three times just to get it out so it sounds good and then go on to the next one. Let me end with this, which I hope to take up into next week. Glory be to God. Romans chapter 8. I thank you for bearing with me here. This is important. We believe in speaking in tongues in this church. I don't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> now is the time I should tell them. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. What does the Holy Spirit... Let me ask you a question. What's the, how does He manifest Himself? <laughs> in words and speaking in tongues. Thank you. At least we got somewhere... This is how the Holy Spirit manifests Himself, through words. Likewise, the Spirit also helps. Remember, He's the helper. When's He going to help you? If you need help, pray in the Spirit. Do yourself a favor. You need counsel? Pray in the Spirit. You need comfort? You need peace? You need direction? You need all that. He's the Holy Ghost. He is right there to do everything Jesus did for the disciples and more, greater. It's the greater when the Holy Ghost comes. You need money. Did they ever need money when Jesus was here? Did they ever need food? Let's see you feed 5,000 people with their wives and kids. Kids could eat back then like they eat now. You need food? Pray in tongues. This is how. This is how the Holy Spirit manifests Himself. This is how He gets it through to you. You need wisdom? You need glory. He said he's going to glorify Jesus. You need anything from heaven? You need healing? Pray in the Spirit. It gives the Holy Spirit the license to manifest himself and be a witness in the earth. The kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> glory be there. There's no poverty in heaven. So what comes out of your mouth when you speak in the Holy Ghost? Truth. Glory be to God forever. The glory of God. He's the spirit of glory. I didn't finish this yet, did I? But the spirit himself makes intercession for us. Remember, he said he's the intercessor with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. You need the will of God manifest in your life. Speak in tongues. 
Speak in tongues and the will of God will manifest in your life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Every time. It's His job. Do your job. Verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good. You see that? When did it say, and we know? Remember it said, the Holy Spirit came on them so they would know the things that were freely given to them. This just said, now that the Holy Spirit's making intercession for you, through speaking in tongues, you would know the good things of God. And we know that all things work together. When do all things work together for good? When you're speaking in tongues. You can know that all things are working together when you're speaking in tongues. Well, the situation's really bad. It's really bad. Well, just shut your mouth and quit saying it's really bad and start speaking in tongues over the situation. Speak in tongues. And you know, after you've prayed, after you've spoken, after you've come to that place of knowing, you know that all things are working together for good. How do you know? Well, number one, the Word says so. Number two, you have the inner witness. They began on the day of Pentecost. And we're finishing it up here. Hallelujah. They spoke some good things back then. We're the Latter-day Church. The Latter-day Saints here. And we're speaking in tongues. And we're manifesting the kingdom. We're called upon to, to fulfill all things. This last generation, we're called to wrap it up, people. So we better be tongue-talking all the time. Wake up in the morning speaking in tongues. Go to bed at night speaking in tongues. You know, you can do all kinds of things speaking in tongues. Drive your car speaking in tongues. Dial the phone while you're speaking in tongues. What is happening when you're speaking in tongues? You're being counseled. You're being comforted. You have peace coming to you. You are being revealed things to come. You are declaring supernatural things and the, ma- the kingdom of God is being manifest around you all the time. So what am I doing when I'm speaking in tongues? I'm manifesting the kingdom yeah. through the power of the Holy Ghost and His manifested words. I hope I've inspired you to speak in tongues more than ever. And this is going to get gooder. It is. Because we're going to have so much faith. Now listen to me. You can have faith in your words. Just like Jesus. What did Jesus say when he said to the fig tree? Did he talk to the fig tree? Fig tree, you are going to die. I'm telling you. I'm so mad at you. You're going to die. Die, fig tree. You'll die. I'll die. I'll die. And stayed up all night until the fig tree started showing signs of dying. He said it once. He spoke words once. Released his faith. And it started immediately. What's the difference between that and you releasing faith in the words that the Holy Spirit's given to you? It's even greater there because you believe. You've got to believe in your heart that what you say out your mouth is coming to pass. When you open your mouth to speak in tongues, believe that whatever it was that you said out your mouth is coming to pass. Put faith behind it. 